several months. We're going to, before we begin our board meeting, we're going to start with a word of prayer. Uh, we'll, uh, I do my best to get a, a pastor from a church in the community in which we have the board meeting. So tonight we've asked a uh, pastor of Boone's Camp, Fuel about his church, Ed Hickman, to come and start us with a word of prayer. So everyone will please stand and join us. Father, first of all, we thank you for all your many blessings, all the good things that you do for us and that you give us. Father, we thank you for this school system, Father, for all the great gifts of, of all the wonderful children that we have. We pray, God, that you'll watch over each one of them, bless them. Father, help them to be able to learn and, and grow and mature. We pray for all the faculty, Father, for all the teachers and all those that work in our school systems, God, that you just touch them, give them wisdom, and, and help them to guide our children in the right way. We pray for the men and women that are gathered here today, Father, that will make decisions uh, concerning our children, that you would give them wisdom, and God, that you would help them in everything that they do. Father, we just pray that not only will you bless our community, but you will bless our state, our nation, all of our leaders, Lord, that we would make decisions uh, that would be pleasing to you, Father. We, we pray, God, that you'll heal all those that are sick. There's many that are sick. We pray for the lost, that you'll save them before it's too late. Father, we thank you and we praise you for all things. Once again, bless this meeting tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for coming. I know you have to slip out. We appreciate your time. Thank you. meeting to order for January 28, 2019. First order of business is the affirmation of elected board members in accordance with KRS 02.010. Uh, assisting us with this tonight is the Honorable Judge John David Preston. All right. I need two members to raise their right hand. Who's hand? Stand if you would. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. Aye. State your name. But I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth and be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky so long as I continue so long as I continue a citizen thereof and that I will faithfully execute the best of my ability, the office of school board member, office of school board member of the Johnson County Board of Education, of the Johnson County Board of Education, according to law, according to law, and I do further solemnly swear, further solemnly swear, that since the adoption, and since the adoption of the present Constitution, of the present Constitution, I being a citizen, I being a citizen of this state. I've not fought a duel with deadly weapons within this state, nor out of it, nor have I sent, or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons, nor have I acted as second in carrying a challenge, nor aided or assisted any person thus offended. So help me God. So help me God. And continue, I and state your name. To continue, uh, all over here. I and Jesse Sager. Being duly sworn. And being duly sworn. sworn. State that I am eligible. I am eligible. Under the law. Under the law. To serve as a member. To serve as a member. Of the Johnson County Board of Education. Of the Johnson County Board of Education. And that I will not. Well, I will not. While serving as member, while serving as a member of such board, of such board, become interested, become interested, directly or indirectly, directly or indirectly, any con, any contract with, any contract with, or claim against the board, claim against the board, and that I will not, and I will not, in any way, in any way, influence the hiring. Influence the hiring or appointment of district employees, or the appointment of district employees, except the hiring, except the hiring of the superintendent of schools, superintendent of schools or school board attorney. 
Let's go, Lord, and hear you. Congratulations. You're duly sworn. the uh, Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag, and we're going to have uh, Alexis Gwen uh, lead us in that pledge. as they currently are. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? If there is none, we'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next on item four on the uh, mission statement, Josh Johnson, sixth grader here at the school, will mention that. for every child, every day, vision, and in innovative school district focused on learning without boundaries, core values, integrity, leadership, commitment, and service. Thank you. Uh, we will begin tonight with student recognitions. Uh, the meeting being in Central Elementary, we will recognize uh, some students from Central Elementary. At this time, I'll turn it over to Principal Robin Halsey to introduce those students. Thank you guys for being here tonight. We love the opportunity to always show up our school, so thank you. Uh, our first presentation, since it is the uh, January, is Board Appreciation Month. We would like to do the proclamation and honor our board members. So if I can have Sydney Maddox come forward. To read the proclamation. You guys want to go This is a proclamation honoring the Johnson County Board of Education. Whereas our community values quality education as a vital step along the pathway to success for our children, and whereas Bob Hutchison, Melvin Magnus, William Fraley, Paul Greer, and Jesse Sawyer contribute greatly to this community through their service on the Johnson County Board of Education. And whereas these decision makers are responsible for maintaining strong, effective budgetary oversight, high standards for employment, and a safe, well managed at school facilities, and whereas these board members are serving our community with integrity, honor, and a commitment to our children's futures, and whereas January 2019 marks Kentucky's observation of their contributions through School Board Recognition Month. Therefore, the students and staff of the Johnson County School System do hereby proclaim the month of January 2019 throughout this community as School Board Recognition Month and urge all citizens to honor Bob Hutchison, Melvin Vandrews, William Fraley, Paul Greer, and Jesse Sawyer for their service. National, internationally in Wisconsin, and in 2017, our COPS team were grand champions. That's throughout the world. And we competed with uh, schools from New Zealand and um, all over the place. 
uh, England, um, Australia. So it was all over the United States and all over the world. So we were grand champions in <clears throat> excuse me, 2017. In 2018, we were second place junior environmental concerns division. And our goal this year is to make it to Massachusetts. So with that being said, our CMPS team would like to come forward and talk to you about their project that they're doing this year and give you a little bit of information on that. So guys, come on up.
Five staff, one to a certified staff, who have been uh, nominated and recognized for going above and beyond the normal call of duty. Uh, the recipients of the Golden Eagle Award will each get a certificate, as well as a Golden Eagle. And the the special part of the Golden Eagle to me is the fact that it's made uh, by students at Johnson Central High School and painted and completed by the art department at Johnson Central High School. With well, this time, I will read a, a short introduction of the certified. Uh, winner for the month. <coughs> when considering the certified recipient of the Golden Needle Award, words such as outstanding, extraordinary, remarkable, phenomenal, and excellent come to mind. This person is a 1999 graduate of Johnson Central High School who also worked at Big Sandy Community Technical System before beginning her teaching career. Currently, she teaches 5th and 6th grade writing and language arts and has proven time and time again to be a great educator and leader. She has demonstrated her vital impact to her classroom by continually scoring top writing test scores year after year and the high performance of her students in all content areas. She is upbeat, self-sacrificing, and extremely hardworking. Not only a great educator, but extremely talented as well. She sang with Big Sandy Idols for several years, and she uses her gift to direct the school choir and assist students in many leadership events, such as school plays and musicals. She is also the speech and drama coach. I think probably she felt like that's the reason she was here tonight to talk about that. Uh, a member of the literacy team, the leadership team. A true team player whose ambition and drive inspires those around her. She is such a dedicated teacher that once she got up in the middle of the night, videoed a lesson for her students after one of her own children woke up with a virus. Her students still received that lesson the next day via their Chromebooks with a substitute in her place. Please join me in congratulating this month's certified Golden Eagle winner, Ms. Frances Hackney. multiple nominations for this person. <coughs> for more than 24 years as an employee of the Johnson County School District, she is described as a self-motivated, team-oriented, and hard worker with a fabulous attitude. Going above and beyond to do her job, she ensures daily that the students feel loved. She is a smiling face to kids riding the bus, as well as a smiling face to the students in her classrooms. She decorates hallways, helps with holiday lunches, finds extra clothes for those in need, and yet still finds time to complete all of her other projects. There isn't a piece of equipment that she doesn't know how to work in her school. It's been said that it's hard to find an employee that will, suit, that will do nearly as much as this lady. A true asset to the school and district, she is an inspiration to all who know her. So congratulations and welcome to Classified uh, Golden Eagle winner, Miss Anita Guerrero. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> my son is not in the December the 17th, 2018's regular meeting and bills, as well as payroll through January the 24th, 2019. Is there a motion? Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion's made and second. Any discussion? If there'll be no discussion. We'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next, uh, renovation report, Mr. Adams. On A. Uh, approval payment of uh, the $1,828.31 uh, for the payment up to date for uh, uh, design progress. I do ask that you go ahead and approve that payment. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So made. Second. <laughs> motion to made and second. Any discussion? If there be none, call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. On B, I'm going to, I'm going to let Kevin uh, group B and C together. Uh, you probably need to give two separate motions, but that way we can talk about both of them. Uh, the first one is the approval for BG1 for schematic design for, for school safety. And the third one is the approved design development for BG2 and BG3 for vocational allocation. I have Kevin Sheet from Sherman Carter Barnhart today, and he's going to take a few minutes to explain B and C to you. I appreciate the opportunity uh, to be with you tonight. We're going to be talking about the schematic design first for the security vestibules across the district. This has been a very important project to you as a board, and we are now getting to the point where we're ready to move forward and present this to KDE. We've had a lot of meetings with the staff, uh, with the district staff and so forth, talking about how these might work, spent some time on site, had some teams come down and look at each individual security vestibule opportunity, and then this is a result of that. So the first thing I'll do is uh, if it would please the board, I'd like to sit down where I can kind of manipulate the iPad if that's okay. Um, what we're going to talk about first is the high school. Of course, at the high school, we have what we call the ground floor, but I would like to talk about the main entrance to the building first. We all know how critical security is right now at this time, in this day and age. It's a lot different than I, when I was a child and different than those in the room that are older than I, of course. We didn't have to worry so much about that, but nowadays we need to take a close look at this, and I think this is very opportune to do so. Uh, the first area, and we've met, talked with Noel about this and, and the board as well, and what we'll be doing is, is basically taking this area of the existing administrative wing and renovating that. And you may say, well, why are we renovating the administrative wing? Well, it's critical because the existing access to the building did not work well as you come into that security vestibule. If you go out to the school now, and when you walk in, you basically walk in, and you have to come in and go out the hall and go in over here on this side. Basically, when those kids or when those visitors are coming in, they can buzz in, but once they're in and once they get through, even if we put a buzzer and intercom system in, they can get access anywhere they want to go within the building without even having to go into the office. So, one of the key components we add that, that the Kentucky uh, uh, Safe Schools Organization advocates is secure entrances and vestibules. So what we're going to be doing is if we're going to move the doors, the first set of doors that you see at this point, we're going to move the existing doors out and we're going to add a secondary set of doors. What that does is create a security vestibule right there in that location. 
So before anybody can get to school, they're going to uh, approach the building. They'll have visibility, and I'll show you an enlarged plan to get into this detail uh, here shortly of that whole area. But keep that in mind as we go forward. So this will be our key point of lockdown right in this area here, okay? That'll be our first line of defense. Now, we've got a lot of buildings in this district, and especially this building. High schools are used a lot. And over the years, keys tend to get duplicated. It's very, 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 very hard to secure your building in the evenings, which is critical to life safety for these students. So what we'll be doing is, is we're going to go around the outside of the building, and every one of these entrants, we're not going to deny access. We're just going to be able to control access. So each one of these doors will have a card reader, a card swipe, an identity card, or an electronic key, HID technology, that you'll walk up and you'll swipe that on the proximity ring. If you've been given access, you can get access to the building, to that space. With this type of system, we will secure the various points around this building so that we can have that secured access throughout the building. Okay? The beauty of this type of system is, and let's say I, I as an architect, as our firm, an architectural firm, one of my staff comes on site to do a survey, or an engineer, or a mechanical contractor comes in to do some work. They need access, they can get an issue to key, and within 24 hours, four hours, two days, the key expires. So that we can constantly monitor who comes and goes, and we can check who came and went in that facility, and that gets you the security you're looking for. Uh, the enlarged plan of the admin area, I wanted to show you this. So if I am visiting the high school, I will come up to this door and I will be at this location. I will stop. These doors are locked. You'll buzz. You'll have a camera. You'll have an ex exterior security camera. We're also adding in an accessibility ramp to get ADA accessibility to the main entrance, which you currently do not have, which poses another issue. So we're going to address that as part of this contract. As you can see, the receptionist will be in this area. These doors, this set of doors here, is going to form what I call your second line of defense. When those doors shut, they lock. They cannot be open from this side unless you have a key to unlock them physically. Okay? So the average public can come in, they get buzzed in, and they can go directly in to the receptionist, credentials checked, and if they need to enter the building, they can go out into enter the building this way. All right, so that's the security operation for this. Right now, and, and Noel has a plan of this, and we've been talking with Noel. Don't need to take another look at this, but right now what we've got is at the front entrance, the SRO office right there. So that's the first thing you see when you come in the building is there's an SRO office. So people get the idea, they get the understanding that security is at the forefront. And then we're renovating the rest of the space to provide additional offices, guidance offices, SVDM conference room to meet your KDE requirement, work room, records room, full-size two-hour rated record room, which is required by KDE, a small work room, and a smaller office there. So that's the areas of the renovation. And we can't get all of that in the space unless we renovate that space, and that's included in the BG1 I'll be discussing tonight. So any questions about the high school? It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Okay. And now what we'll do is I'm going to talk about each individual school. Each one of these, the complexity of the work vary because of the architecture within the building. At Highland Elementary, you'll approach, and currently you approach, and Tim, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, there is an existing buzz-in system. Okay? Then we will stop them at this door. The difference is here, right now you have free swing into the door and people can bypass right by the general office without having to be stopped. So we're going to put that on a lockdown. When the door's shut, they lock. You can get out of them in, in case of an emergency egress. And then we're adding a door so they have to come in and check in. That's your first line of defense. That's critical. Those are your gatekeepers. They're the ones that are trained to observe the body language, to observe the actions of those folks as they come in the door. They'll actually observe them via the AI phone on the outside and then get another chance to see them as they're coming in the vestibule. What you're seeing in yellow is sort of the zone of visibility that we have. So what we're trying to do is buy time and be able to observe them 
recognize issues, and then notification. So that's high. At Johnson Central Elementary, here it's very similar. You already have an existing vestibule. We're adding an enhanced AI phone card reader, but we're adding a door to get that access in right to that receptionist, then right back out, and those doors can remain locked so you don't have what we call trailers. The person who just kind of slips in behind. We've got that ability. So it's very similar to the other school as well. Uh, out at Flat Gap, at Flat Gap, again, we're trying to utilize and maximize what we've got without spending a lot of money. So here, the reception area is going to stay the same. We're opening this up, adding a set of doors back here, reopening this set of doors so when they come in, they go in and back out, which is what you want, just like the other schools. So every school will be consistent in its operation. going down to Johnson Central Middle. Now at the middle school, we've got a little more opportunity. It's a larger group of kids, the ages are older, and the size of the space has grown. So what we've done here, you had an existing set of doors that were right in that area. We're taking that set of doors out, and we're taking out the adjacent set of doors in that same area. What we will do is put in a new set of doors that have access control, and these will remain on lock Unless, and as you come up, they'll hit an AI phone type system with a card reader to get in, and the students will, or students will have free pass when it's drop off and pick up in the morning. This is mainly for in-school operation hours. Then they will be stopped here, but visitors will come through and back out like this. So you'll have the ability to see this whole open vestibule area right now, gain the access, and be checked credentials be observed, be monitored, kind of watched for any kind of emotional distress. You know, quite often I hear people say, well, I let them go through because I know them. Well, I don't know what they were going through last night. That's the key. That's why you want this opportunity to observe them as they approach that front door. As opposed to being just buzzed through, straight through. And they'll get new finishes in here in the floor and so forth. Porter Elementary poses the greatest amount of uh, work to make it functional. Right now, and I'm going to kind of highlight this, your exterior of your building envelope does this. <clears throat> Everything out here is on the exterior. So it's very clear there that we have to construct something to create a vestibule, a secure vestibule. So we will be creating a security vestibule, and I'll highlight that in green because I think it's easy to communicate. This is now our new security vestibule. So we're going to do some construction. You may say, well, that, why can't we just put an aluminum storefront? We had this conversation earlier today. What are you going to do? What, what's involved in this piece of the project? Well, what's involved here is we're going to have to cut that slab out. You say, well, can't we just put a hollow metal frame or aluminum frame on that existing sidewalk? That sidewalk moves differently than your building slab. So we're going to have to go in there. Plus, that slab does not have any vapor barrier underneath. So we're going to saw cut that out, put a new slab in that will receive a nice floor finish, and then we've got to redo the soffits, and we've got to add some heat into that space because we don't want to have an interior space that's unheated. We're going to have to have a little heat in there to keep it tempered. So now, as people approach this building, there will be an AI phone, as you see right there. They'll come in, and before they can get into the building, they'll directly go into this space, and check in here, and they get access to the building here. It's that simple. So we're, we're taking everybody by the gatekeeper at all these schools. Nobody gets access unless they go through that area. These red X's are indicating that's on a mechanical, sort of a passive locking system. When those doors shut, they lock, unless they're open from the opposite side. So this works out really well. A little more involved in work because we're going to, pro we're going to have to come back and create this reception desk because it's not existing to help contain that flow of people through that space. And lastly, WR Castle. WR Castle, we've got an existing area here. We're going to just add a set of door frames here and cut a door in there and they will come in and go in and back out just like that. 
So that will be the path flow there. So that's the scope of work that is included. Any questions about the scope of work before I talk a little bit about the BG1? Okay. So with the BG1, I'm going to give you a copy of the BG1. Uh, for the new board members, you may not have been through the process, so I'll explain this to you. Every project that goes before KDE has to re receive a board-approved buildings and grounds form number, number one. What it basically is, it's a project application that KDE requires to show the intent of the work, the proposed cost of the work at this phase, in this stage, and then also illustrate that there's a, a equal funding available to fund that portion of work. So what I'm looking at here, if I have my right form, correct one up. So basically it's a brief description of the scope of work. And I'm going to go down to what's, and there's a scope narrative there you can see down on the, about the, the bottom of the first page that shows a description of the various um, work that I've described tonight. Now on the next page, which is, happens to be on the back of the first page, two-sided printed, try to save paper here, um, you can see the financial plan. Shows the total construction cost at 1.367447 for all of these, all inclusive of all this work. Now if you go down, there's soft costs that are also included, but the total project cost is 1625000 Now, per your fiscal agent, your fiscal folks, this is being paid for out of bond sale, SFCC money, as well as your local FSPK bond sale money to bring that to an equal number. Hey, so that one equals thing out. One thing you didn't mention is the fact that replacement of all doors to bring to the high school as well. Yes. Yes, those doors that I showed access control being added to, all those exterior doors and frames will be replaced because we need to get power to those doors and frames. Also included in this budgetary amount is re-keying of every single exterior door and frame in the district. So now you will be on a grandmaster. You'll be starting off at ground zero, and that way you know who has keys to what portion of the building which is critical to security. Anytime, if, you ever, if anyone's ever was in the military, the first thing you want to do in a defensive situation is secure the perimeter. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're securing the perimeter of this building and all your buildings as part of this project. Anything you'd like to add, sir? Tim? Right. So tonight we're asking the approval of schematic design. This is the first step. What we will do is we'll go back and make the minor revisions we talked about today. The cost will be there. We will come back to you at design development, and we're going to try to do a combination of design development and construction documents to buy us some time with KDE and get that out here. But at that time, I'll bring another BG3, which you'll see in a minute, and I'll explain the BG3, which has an updated cost opinion that will tell us if we're still in line with budget because things change. We want to make sure we monitor that every step of the way and keep you informed. Okay? Thank you. Good presentation. Yeah. Appreciate it. You'll be going to C or vocational school or go ahead and uh, get a motion on B. Is there a motion to approve? So made. Second. Second motion. Motion made and second. Any discussion? There'll be none. We'll call for vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to 7C. Thank you. You were blessed to receive the uh, grant, workforce development grant money. No worked hard on that grant. And uh, we worked together on that. And you received some money to fund an, uh, an uh, expansion, so to speak, a small project, but yet a much needed project in your VOTEC section with the Valley the Career Center, uh, the Area Technology Center. So, what we're doing, you, you saw Allison was here and our team. I'm back tonight to take you to the next step, which is design development. And this is where we've laid a lot of information in. I'm going to try to keep it as brief as possible. Uh, I won't go into much detail, but we've gotten with the uh, Kentucky Department of Housing Buildings and Construction. We figured out how we could add this building on and still meet the required code requirements. Uh, they are going to grant you a variance, which is good news. Uh, this building, existing building, is over the size allocation 
for a high school, a, a building, of any building, it doesn't have to be a high school, of this size, but they're allowing us to grandfather it in because we're really not increasing the population and allowed us to add basically a, an existing firewall situation that will allow us to add on. Uh, for the newer board members, as you can see here, our existing building is this section of the building down at the end where the existing carpentry and ag shop is, and we are adding on this section of the building to expand that with two bays that are much needed space for the projects that they conduct in and the things they do. Uh, site, Bowcook Engineering has been working with us on the site. They're doing a good job. They've got a lot of documents created, and these are various topos, site survey. There's an aerial photograph, and I will show sort of a highlighted area. What we're doing is basically we're going to add the building in right there will be the addition, and this side of it is the existing scope of work, okay, in there. So we're expanding out towards the parking lot area. Uh, from the overall site plan, you will end up with a fenced-in yard there for storage, and then you will have access there <coughs> into the bay and an access area into this bay. Uh, they've got various details done, and as this develops up here, you'll have to bear with me. It takes a little time for things to generate. There's so much information in this file. But there's uh, cross-sections cut. There's fencing details that are shown. I'll just sit still for just a minute, and it'll pop right up. You can see we're using a large gates. Uh, the fencing will be a chain link fence with the privacy slats in those, the vinyl privacy slats. Structural, uh, what we're basically looking at doing, and I will bring this to everyone's attention so that they understand, and it may have been discussed at the last meeting, the existing building here is currently in a floodplain. It's down below the corner of that building's in a floodplain, so KDE said you've got to raise it. Well, the cost to raise it sure did. It was cheap enough to raise in lieu of losing the grant money, so the decision was made to go ahead and move forward. We raised the slab up of the existing building, and then our addition is also built out of the flood plan, so that KD would allow you to move forward with this project, which is critical. Simple bar joist construction. Our new construction will be just basic bar joist with a low slope roof. It will be sloped. It will not be flat, but it will be sloped. We'll have internal roof drains um, also. Foundation, we did get our geotech report. We're waiting review on the geotech report to make sure we don't have any unsuitable soils. And if we get to that point, we'll notify you immediately. Uh, various structural details. Demolition. Uh, what we're basically doing here, we had a conversation today, and I think this is wonderful. We were having the contractor take out some land and ceiling in the existing tech ed, and then also take out a wall that they put in at one point. Uh, they put the wall in. We decided to save some money for the district. They're going to take the wall out as part of their building program and their ceiling. So that's, that's, that's a good way that helps kids get real-world experience. They can take that out and save you a little money. The rest of the demolition is of a size and nature we need a general contractor to do. But those items they put in, uh, we feel comfortable with them making that uh, demolition. More information, general information. Okay, here's the beef of what we're trying to do. If you'll notice, there's a lot of information here. One of the things you lack is ADA access to these classrooms. By title, by the Title IX requirements, you should be providing not Title IX, Title II. Title IX is the, the, uh, the boys and girls. Title II is actually ADA accessibility. ADA accessibility must be provided, so we've got that built into this project. We also have the actual labs are laid out with all their equipment they're going to need and then uh, equipment that's being purchased underneath the uh, grant portion. I think there's some equipment that's coming out of that, some of your own in-kind money there. Two offices are being created, and then this is the new ag with the welding, and then you've got the larger bays on each end. Here we can get you over at door. I know some of the carpentry classes, they build little mini houses and bring them in and take them out. Now we can get them inside the building to work on, and the same way within the agricultural, they can bring in their projects and work on those as well. Overall, I think what's really important is the look. I think the only thing we changed today, again, trying to be conscious of your money and your funds. Uh, the windows were added because we were concerned about daylighting and getting enough light in there. 
Well, everyone assumed they would be overhead doors that would come back like the old overhead doors we've got, and several of us have on our houses. These are coiling doors, so we don't have to worry about them coming back and covering up, when, uh, the, up the lights. So we've got plenty of adequate lighting. The decision was made today to remove those windows on that in bed because that does come from the brightest area of sunlight and gets a lot of heat buildup, and it also just is kind of blinding. And we, we decided the decision was made, let's just go ahead and save that money because it's quite a bit of money to save to take the windows out on that end. You still have windows for the classroom side, and I think that's where it's critical to have the actual daylight in those windows in window areas. Um, other than that, everything else is well underway. The mechanical systems, we spent a lot of time coordinating, looking at the HVAC system, the ducts collection, the dust collection again, trying to save some money. I think it's good the maintenance has decided to relocate the dust collection system to save some additional money. Uh, other than that, everything is ongoing. We've got some plumbing out there that we've talked about. And one of the concerns we've got is where the routing for the plumbing is coming from and what's the condition and status of that. So the engineers are working real close to find out where in the world is it coming from and where is it going. There's not a lot of clear record. We want to identify that. We want to camera those lines now. Because while we've got that slab out and we're elevating that slab, there's no better opportunity to replace that piping now for the underground sanity. So we want to take a look at that. If it is in good shape, I recommend we leave it. But if there's any doubt, now's the time to do it to avoid any future issues. And we want to have to have that study closely. Uh, other than that, it's pretty well simple. It's, it's a nice project. I'm, I'm excited to see the impact it's going to make on the program. I think uh, we've got overhead power. We've got overhead air. We've got all the airdrops coordinated, all the power requirements for all the equipment. It's exciting to see your, your district's been very, very, very good to work with, your staff, going through this whole process. Are there any questions about the scope of work? Okay. Then the last two things we have on the agenda for this project in particular, and again for the new board members, and, and to remind anybody that may have not gone through this process in a while, the first form we're going to talk about is VG2. And I won't bore you with the details, but it's here for your record. Uh, this is the Kentucky Department of Education Building and Grounds Form 2, which is an outline survey of the specifications of the project. So it talks about things like floor finish, it talks about the power requirements, talks about sanitary, talks about the water. What this does is gives KDE an idea that all these things are being thought through through the process. So this has all been, uh, all been a detailed part of it. Now the BG3 is a opinion of probable costs that we generate to compare it to the BG1 for any costs that may have changed. And we have added a little bit of cost, the elevating of the slab that came up, that added some cost. So if we look at this right now, I'm going to pull up the original BG1. That's the outlines of BG3, initial BG1. I have that one in here. Okay, here's the BG3. We are at uh, 1.4 for construction, which brings us to a total project cost of 1.791520. We will bring this back to you again with a final BG3 on the construction documents. Okay. 
that's the one form that I did not get a copy of from the staff. Okay, here he is. No, it's, it's, it's I can get that original number for you all, but we did go up a little bit, but we're still within the number that we do. Now, we're within the 10% number. I think it was like a 6% increase. Did that 1.625 is the one? That 1.625 is the cost for the security vest. Okay. Yeah. So we were 6% uh, over okay. the original BG1 number, which is still within budget and within range, but KDE does not require you, if it's 10% or less, we do not have to revise the BG1. If we see there's an issue at the next approval, which is construction documents, we'll be coming back to the board and say, we're good to go, let's bid it, or not, we need to take a moment, let's look at the finance situation, and we need to revise the BG1. And that's the way the normal operation works, the process of checks and balances. And keep in mind, this is funded through that grant. That's right, it's funded through the grant. And you don't see a corresponding paperwork here that shows where the funding's coming from because this is just a check and balance to see if we're on track. Once we get bids in, we'll be required to do another BG1 that'll show exactly where that money's coming from the grant. Now, the greatest majority of it, Noel, was coming from the grant. Yes. That was the, where the biggest chunk of this was. Any questions? There will be no questions. I ask for a motion to approve the design development and BG2 and BG3 for vocational allocation. Mm -hmm. So made. Motions made. Is there a second? Second. Motions made and second. Any discussion? There will be no discussion. We'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, new business, Mr. Goble. State law requires that the board be a draft budget by January 31st of each year. I always like to take this time to remind the board, and especially now that we have two board members, that the draft budget is the first of three budgets that I present to the board every year. The second is the tentative, and I present that in May. And the final is the working budget, and I present that in September. The draft budget, it's an early planning tool. And I feel like it used to be more useful than the legislators met every biennium, but now that they meet every year, it's hard to um, have any information to work with. There's a lot to do before we can adopt the fiscal year 2020 budget. Um, so the budget that you have before you is, is just a copy of what you adopted back in uh, September. Except I did adjust for the CERS rate that's going to increase 12% uh, this year. It'll go up from 21.48% to 24.06%. And, of course, there's a lot of things that we don't know that we have to know before we can adopt the budget. We won't know the amount of our carry forward that we'll end this fiscal year with. Uh, any possible state and federal funding cuts that the legislature may hand down to us. We still have to adopt tax rates, matter vehicle assessments. And we've not we've not got our property assessments and and how much this will affect our state funding. We also still have to adopt our staffing allocations, and we don't know our student ADA. Uh, we don't need approval on the draft budget; it's just for your review only. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And it is. Uh, item eight B. Uh, Due to some uh, information that we are still seeking out, we're going to ask for a motion to table 8B uh, until the next meeting. We'll make so the motion has been made by Mr. Fair. Second? Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Fraley. Any discussion? There be none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 8C, Mr. Adams. Uh, we've been going through, through the shop with the performance contract and, and a couple of uh, items that we've taken care of and updated. We have items that are no longer a benefit to Johnson County Schools, for example, the lighting, uh, or the old halo lighting. Is, we've got LEDs now, ballast we don't use, but we've, we're asking for permission to sell uh, the list of excess items that, that are listed there. Also including that are the cafeteria table. Oh, yeah. We just we yeah, we're a great new table. cafeteria table for all of our schools. We, we'd like to put those out in lots. 
per school as we as we asked for permission to do those as well. Uh, I know you're going to see a van listed on there. That van is a van that the, the motor no longer is functioning in it, and it costs more to the motor than what the van worth. So uh, we, we've been able to uh, uh, move things around, and, and so we've asked that. We have asked to get rid of that. We have a couple of kitchen items that are no longer functional as well. So um, again, we're just asking for permission to, to sell these items to clean out space in our shop. Thank you. Is there a motion to do so? Motion to approve any surplus items we're not using. Thank you. Second. Second. Motion's made and seconds. Any further discussion? There'll be none. We'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Adams. <coughs> Next to uh, 8D, Mr. Cochran. For the past several years, the Johnson Central FFA Ag Department has been using the farm down on the, on the back side of the property. It, uh, it's actually owned by the, the Melvin family. Uh, we and you have uh, a lease agreement attached. I'm asking that uh, you approve that lease for this year. Also, um, there have been a conversation they have expressed interest in selling that property, which uh, to me, the Ag the FFA is the prime user that, that would need and utilize that property. So I'd like to get permission to, to get an appraisal to see fair bar department value so I have a better idea of how to communicate with uh, the, the potential sellers. Thank you. I'd like to get a motion to approve the FFA farm lease agreement as well as giving Mr. Cotton the uh, empowerment or authority to <coughs> seek uh, an appraisal and uh, any other information necessary to seek uh, a uh, the acquisition of that property. Is there a motion to approve? Yes, sir. Motion been made. Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> 8F, Ms. Coleman and or Ms. Music. Uh, yes, on behalf of Ms. Coleman and the principals, you have in front of you or um, on your computer a copy of the nutrition and wellness annual report with findings and recommendations. Uh, the superintendent's charged with um, sending this to KDE, and so we just need board approval of the report. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the report? So made. Second. Second. Motion to made and second. Any discussion? There'll be none. We'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 8F. Mr. Crum, Ms. Halsey. Um, ours is a uh, tractor supply grants for growing. Uh, that, uh, that our uh, agriculture department's want to apply for. And we would like to apply for the students to upgrade our plant. We also would like to pass a virtue with us, but we'd like to apply for a cost grant. Uh, cost grant through the Bible Convention Program. Uh, look at the uh, possibility of adding more cameras on all of our campuses and Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the grant participation? Second. Second. Motion's made and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 8G, school trips, Mr. Crum. Our FFA is going February 13th, 14th uh, to Louisville to the National Farm Machinery Show. Uh, baseball and softball will be doing their spring uh, uh, break trip April 1st to the 5th to Myrtle Beach uh, this year. And all state choir is February 6th through the 8th in Louisville. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve student trips? Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and second. Is there any further discussion? If there'll be none, we'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 8-H, Mr. Cochran. Asking the board to approve the annual fee for the Franksville uh, golf course. That is for the season of this thing, 2018 season. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. Motion's been made and second. Any discussion? There will be none. We'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 8 I, Mr. Young. Yeah, I'd like the board to approve <coughs> our spring PPO fundraiser. It's through Queen's fundraising. going to run February 19th through 
I think, the first weekend, week in March. Thank you. Second. Second. Motion to made and second. Any discussion? If there be none, we'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, next item, Mr. Eastep. Uh, previously, the board had approved a uh, calendar committee and the members that to serve on that, and there have been two that uh, are not normally able to serve on that committee. So I'm just asking the board to approve uh, the two replacements. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion to made and second. Any discussion? There'll be none. We'll call for vote. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item, Mr. Crum. Uh, yeah, we have a use of facilities request. Uh, the uh, Calvary Church of God on April 20th uh, is wanting to use uh, our football field uh, and the area out there for the community Easter egg hunt. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Second. Motion's been made and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 9, Mr. Coffin. As you know, each month I try to keep you abreast of uh, my professional growth uh, based on the superintendent's professional growth and evaluation system. This month uh, was to discuss standard five managerial leadership. Managerial leadership deals mostly with finances uh, and finances of the district. I have a sheet for you, but I left it on my desk, so I will email that to you. I would like to add, though, uh, in, in another topic, this being Board Member Appreciation Month, I'll take just a moment to thank you, each one of you, for uh, your time, your efforts, your dedication, your involvement, and your commitment to the children, uh, the staff, and the entire community of Johnson County Schools. You are to be committed, and we appreciate your service. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to be a servant to this school district and to the teachers, uh, the administrators, janitors, cooks, everybody in the school spit system, bus drivers, everybody. This is an awesome school district, and, and uh, I think we're all blessed to be able to serve you all. Uh, thank you. Uh, next item, we've got the superintendent's personnel report, which everybody has a copy of. No actions required. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion made and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. Be safe.